Hello YouTube, it is your girl Curvaceous. I am back with another YouTube video. Now in this video, I'm going to be showcasing a vehicle wrap, which I do in all my videos, of course, but this one's gonna be a little different just in the way how I, this isn't actually my own artwork. I collaborated with an amazing Marvel book, comic book artist by the name of Tyler Kirkham. If you don't know who he is, I suggest, I highly suggest that you give this guy a follow. Here's his Instagram handle right here. I'm gonna put it right here. This is his artwork. Just, this is insane. This is Venom and Carnage, like, duh. <laughs> And we actually got to put this onto a car. So he needed my help to really adapt the artwork onto the vehicle. And those are the services that I do offer because there's a lot of amazing, talented artists out there that want to put their art on a car, but don't really know how. So this is what this video is gonna kind of pertain to and how I make it work. Another really great thing about this project is that I actually got to collaborate, not just with a famous Marvel book, comic book guy, Tyler, I got to collaborate with an amazing rap shop who are definitely my rap besties in the game, uh, Rap Sash and Vinyl Vixen. They have a YouTube video, video, a YouTube channel where they actually describe and really get into the nitty gritty and they teach you how to become a better installer. And the raps that they do are just, they're just dope. <laughs> they're off the chain. If you're just tuning in and you're seeing me as the designer but you want to learn more about the installation process, go check them out. These guys are the go-to installers in the rap game for sure. The other person I shall mention is the owner of the vehicle. Her name is Lucy. She's absolutely a sweetheart. Um, you wouldn't think that by just looking at her car, but she's super cool. Um, and the fact that a female actually owns this car is, to me, that's just the coolest thing. Lucy, I'll put her handle right here. Go check her out. And the last person I will sort of mention is Muto. Well, it's not really a person per se. There's a lot of amazing people that work for Muto, but these guys, uh, what they provide is the printers, um, the printing capabilities. And with this particular wrap, we needed Muto, like big time, because if you look at the artwork, there's a lot of blacks within this artwork. And when you're printing so much black onto a vinyl sort of material, it's really difficult to do. So these guys nailed it. We had a lot of black ink that we had to incorporate in this wrap. So without Muto, we definitely couldn't have done it. But Vinyl Vix and Rap Sash also give another overview on, on how they made the material. The way that they did this, they actually used like a carbon fiber of uh, like lamination on top, which is super like, I don't even know how they did it. So you gotta go watch their videos. Um, they kind of give behind the scenes. And when you see this wrap in person, just to touch that carbon fiber, like it's so shiny and it's got all that texture. My renderings don't do justice. Once you actually see the wrap and it actually comes together and becomes like a piece, it's definitely SEMA worthy, put it that way. So SEMA's canceled this year because of coronavirus. <laughs> so sad. But next year, well, hopefully next year, I mean, the way things are going right now, it doesn't look good. Um, but hopefully 2021, you know, SEMA will be up and running again and we can have some more awesome cars to be really show showcasing all these amazing wraps because the wrap community, we are up and coming like paint. Sorry, paint, no! but it's just, you're dying. No, no, paint is still relevant, um, but wraps just give such different, you can do so much more with wraps for a lower cost, if that makes sense. All these designs, like if someone were to paint this onto a car, you're looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just for the airbrush work alone. Like, yeah, like way over. And then with me, yes, I'm still charging in the thousands, but it's not going to be that excessive and it's still gonna be a, a piece of art onto your car. So it's essentially the same thing. It really is, but for a lot cheaper. So again, wraps do have their value. And the beauty of wraps, if you're good at wraps, the point of wraps is to make the wrap look like paint. And if you ever see a wrap and it looks like a sticker, well then that installer did not do their job very good. I'm just gonna leave it here, guys. Let's just dive into the video. I'm gonna be showing you the whole entire process on how I made Tyler's work come to life on this car. All right, we are diving in to the Dodge Charger Scat Pack Venom Carnage wrap design. This was on a 2018 model, and this is the final result. Now. It did not start off this way. <laughs> uh, yeah, it took a lot of trial and error and problem solving to get to this final end result. 
yeah. No, I just looking at this now. I'm I'm remembering last year, um, everything that it took to really create this wrap. So I'm very proud of it. Um, you know, and I, I hope in this video, it's it's going to be I wouldn't say a tutorial as such. You're going to learn a lot, but it's going to be more of a case study. So I'm going to be talking about you know the problems that I ran into as being a designer and communicating with people and like just some tips and tricks so that you guys can be better at your job and what to be thinking about um, when you're taking on a job like this. So again, this artwork is by Tyler Kirkham. He works for Marvel. He does a lot of really cool comic book illustrations. They wanted me to take his artwork and put it onto a car so that when it's being at SEMA, which we all know SEMA, Vegas, one of the world's largest car shows, is going to promote him and, you know, everybody else that's involved in the project. So, I will say, when you are working with bigger names, uh, whether they're like big companies or, um, you know, celebrities, things like that, you're not, as a designer, you're not particularly going to be hands-on with the with the other person or the celebrity or the artist or whatever in my particular case there was three other people I had to go through before I could actually access or get access to Tyler um, so the thing is sometimes people that are in these positions they don't quite understand what it is that you do as a job right like yes they understand that I'm a designer but they don't understand the whole technical aspects of being a designer that's why they're hiring me right um, so it's my job to really communicate with them hey guys this is what I need this is you know if you can give me this then I can do my job sort of deal now this is how it started I got a hold of I think I think it was someone from Muto and then Muto had to go to Tyler's manager and then the manager had to go to Tyler and then yada 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 so what I ended up telling Muto what I needed, I, I basically just said, hey, send me the artwork by Tyler and I'll put it on the car. Sounds simple, right? <laughs> Trust me, it wasn't. Um, I'm going to show you exactly what they sent me. And I don't blame them at all. Like everyone does this. Uh, a lot of people that aren't into design. I could tell that they went to Google. Okay, they typed in Tyler Kirkham and they copied or they saved this image and then they sent it to me right it's like okay this is if you look at it it's by 580 by 892 this works if you're you know sending images for maybe social media or, or whatever but when you're doing a vehicle wrap yeah that's not it's not gonna work and I could I could totally tell like thank you guys for sending me all the artwork but uh, honestly I probably could have done the same thing uh, <laughs> Because you're just going to Google and going to his website, and I mean, this happens even with with people that you know I'm doing their commercial wraps for. You know, it's like, can you send me your logo? And then they'll send me a link to their website and be like, yeah, my logo's right there. There you go. There's the image, right? They don't understand what it is that we do as designers and why we need the actual working files. Um, so I'm just gonna just for you know, um, let's just say shits and giggles. Um, I'm just gonna open this. Open view image. Okay. So, I mean, it's not too bad. It's it's a high quality image for the internet, I guess you could say. So I'm just gonna copy this, and kind of getting ahead of myself here. Um, yeah. So let's just say we have a vehicle. Um, you know, this is our mock-up. This is our template. Now I have a lot of videos as well, how to make your own templates, but you can purchase them online. Um, I'm going to be revamping some of those videos on how to create templates because even now I'm even better than what I was before. So something for the future. Anyway, all right, let's just say we have it in Photoshop or Illustrator, or whatever program you're using. We're just going to take this image that I just saved, so copy it, and I'm going to paste it. So you can kind of see, like, this is a real world, like, real, ah, real world scaled model. So this is a real time car. So this is the actual size of the car in my computer right now. And we just copied and pasted this image. And you can see how tiny it is, right? It's like little, little, little tiny, puny little thing. So what a lot of people will do, and I think I've showed this on one of my previous videos, but just for the sake of this little case study, 
a lot of people will do this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, so we're making that larger. Beautiful, right? Looks great from afar, but I'm going to just show you. So we're just going to zoom up. I'm just going to turn off my car template. And I'm just going to show you the artwork. So we are at 100% scale right now. And honestly, looking at this, I've seen worse, I will be honest, but um, you can just see, like, even if you're just looking at the tongue here, see all those little pixels? It's because we scaled the image to be larger than, than what it, it's capable of doing, right? So it's going to, Photoshop is just going to compress it and just compile it and just make it just not very pretty, right? So it's just, yeah. Like, a, a lot of artists, this is what they'll do. They'll send you artwork that is, you know, like, even looking at the blood splatter here. Like, it's blurry. It's just, like, I can't make out what's going on. It's not very crisp. It's not very clear. I don't want to be putting this on a SEMA car. Like, even look at the text, right? Like, you can see all the pixelations. Like, this is meant to be all yellow or, like, a like a light white or whatever, but there's grays and there's little pixels, little blocks in here, right? It's just distorting. It's just making the image not look very pretty. Um, this is another example I'll show you guys. Uh, this was another image they sent. Now this one I felt was a bit odd when they sent it to me because it's like, all right, if you look at the size of this image, um, it's 54 inches by 60 inches. That's pretty, that's pretty big. That's like a, that's like a hood of a car or a roof or whatever. Um, and then the resolution was at a hundred. Now usually I could tell this was tampered with <laughs> just by looking at this resolution. This wasn't actually from Google. Um, I think, I don't know what, what was going on here. I think somebody tried to try to fool me or something. I don't know. But um, if I zoom up here, this is at a hundred percent scale and you can see how blurry, like I can't poor, poor Deadpool kind of in the background here. It just doesn't like, you can look at like, you see, all this, all this junk, it's not very clear, right? And they were saying, yeah, you can use this image to put on the car. I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing that. This is going at SEMA and this is for Tyler Kirkham. I'm not, no, this is not happening. So what I needed to then, I had to go back to the manager and say, look, I need Tyler's actual artwork, like the physical artwork, like when he creates his when he's sending the artwork over to, to Marvel, I can guarantee you this is not the artwork he's sending to Marvel Comics to print out on the comic books, right? This, is, this isn't legit. Um, so what I need from you, go back to Tyler, tell him whatever images that I have, they're not working. I need the actual, actual files, right? So long story short, um, they couldn't, I don't know why, but they couldn't get a hold of Tyler. So they wanted me to kind of move forward with what I could do just using Google Images, right? And sometimes, okay, sure, I can do that. But just to let you know, if I don't have high quality images to work off of, there's going to be more time involved. And therefore, this is going to be more pricier for you guys, right? I'm going to be charging a lot more for my time. However, if you got the proper images, right? If you could just spend a couple, maybe a couple more hours just trying to get a hold of Tyler, it's going to save you a lot more money <laughs> than having me go in and use Google images, right? So this is something you guys can, took me a while to really just train myself and just how I can kind of show clients like, you know, it sounds good in theory, but in the long schemes of things, like if you just spent, if you just, cause I know you guys are busy too, but if you just spent an extra hour or two trying to get a hold of Tyler, it would save you a lot more time and money in the long run, like seriously. So I convinced them, they're like, okay, 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 we'll, uh, we'll, we'll spend the next day or two trying to get a hold of Tyler to get the actual artwork, right? So, but anyway, uh, they still wanted me to move forward because again, time was of essence and we just needed something on the car. While they were trying to get a hold of Tyler, I just proceeded to, to use what I could on Google. And I think I did pretty good. This is pretty high scale. So if you look at it, you know, 5,400 pixels. That's pretty large. It's only at 72 DPI, but you know, it's still a pretty large image. So if I change this to inches, it works out to be 75 inches by 50, right? That's, if you do that in real world scale, that's, that's a really large image. Like you're going to be printing like a huge wall graphic on your wall, right? So it would work. Um, 
I could make it work, right? So I'm just going to zoom up here. And it's not too, too bad. It's like, eh, you know, we'll make it work. This is what we're facing with. And uh, we're just going to move forward. Now, as I was doing this, guess what? We got a call from Tyler, and Tyler sent me an email, and I got the actual artwork. So I'm just going to show you the difference, okay? So this is Tyler's. This is the email I got from Tyler, okay? Now, look at this. I'm just going to zoom up. Like, I'm just going to... Ah! I'm just so happy. I was just so happy at this point. Because um, if you look at the image size, the resolution is at 600. So when it has such a high resolution, I know that if I'm going to throw this on a car, that it's going to be large enough in scale that it's going to work. So I changed this to inches. Now I can tell this is for a comic book because it's only uh, 6 by 10, right? Um, so if you look at a piece of paper, that's usually 8 by 10, right? So this is for a comic book. and I. But the resolution is so high, so I know this is a really high scale quality image. Now. I'm going to show you. So this was the image I found on Google. So I just copied this and pasted this over onto Tyler's, on top of Tyler's actual high resolution image. So I'm just going to show you the comparison here. So this was from Google. And then this is Tyler's work. Google, Tyler's work. Like, can you see the difference? Like even just looking at this glow, like the detail. So this is what, you know, when you upload images to social media and things, it compresses the image, right? So everything that you're working with is not going to be cl like clear and high quality. Um, and this is what a lot of people don't understand what the difference is. <laughs> Why can't you just take this image from Google? Um, but yeah, like, look at that. Look at the difference. And I was just, I'm like, thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you for sending me this. This is, this is beautiful, right? And so when you're working with artists, um, sometimes it's, it's best if they, if they, no matter how they do it, if it's a photo of their artwork or what, always try to get to the source. That's like my number one thing. And like, I don't know, just like going back and forth and just seeing the difference and the clarity. This is what's going to separate you from being an amazing designer to an okay designer. Um, to print something like this, you know, it's just... You, you want to be the best of the best, right? You want to be a good designer. Um, you don't want to be just meh. Um, and this is the stuff that's going to differentiate yourself from the pack. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helps you guys. I'm hoping it does. Okay, so now that we have this, now we're going on to our next um, challenge, let's just say. We got the artwork. Let's just say the artwork's beautiful. It's all high resolution scale. We're good to go. The problem, if you look at this artwork, this is what we call a portrait type style artwork canvas, right? Cars don't go up and down like this. Cars go side to side. So I'm just gonna show, I'm gonna open up my template. So this is a elongated car. Now, if I take this artwork, copy it, and I paste it, this is the problem. Only a little bit of the car. <laughs> this is a lot of space to be filling in with artwork, right? So this is how I kind of describe it to people. As an artist in the vehicle wrap world, this is my canvas. The car is my canvas. I have to fill in this space. And to any artist, to work on, on, on a space this large, that's a lot of artwork. Like, that is so much artwork. And I think, like, I'm just going to be honest, people are not charging enough in this industry for their time and their art to be put onto a car like this. Each side of the car, the hood is a canvas, the roof is a canvas, the trunk is a canvas, the side is a canvas, and this canvas has to be completely filled. So if you were an artist, not even in the vehicle wrap world, to fill in that amount of artwork, like take a tattoo artist for example, right? Tattoo artists usually charge by the size of the piece. So if you're going to have your entire body filled with art, you're going to be looking at thousands of dollars just to fill in that space, right? Whereas if you just have a small little tattoo, it ain't going to be that much, right? 
So this is how I charge. This is how I break it down to people. And the fact that they come to me and they're only looking to have like $200 to $300 for an entire vehicle wrap and there's designers out there charging that, it really, like it gets under my skin. I don't understand why people, and I get it. Like if there's so many other people doing it and you're trying to be in competition with them, you know, you don't want to be like, you want to get the job, right? Because again, you got to be putting food on your table. You got to be doing all of these things to try to make a living. But at the same time, you got to be educating your clients how this actually works, right? So hopefully, you know, <laughs> I get nervous when I'm doing these videos because I feel like I'm preaching something and I don't know if I'm saying it to the right person or if I'm going to offend somebody or it's just hard sometimes. So I'm just going to be myself and this is how I would talk to someone I really love, right? Um, and this is the, the sort of advice I would give them. Um, because for me, starting off as a designer, I would do things for two, three hundred dollars, just hoping, you know, at the end of the day, they'll see what I'm capable of doing and, and just, you know, I just wanted people to be, I wanted people to like me and I wasn't charging enough for the, the things that I was doing. So I've gotten better. I'm now in this industry for seven years. So yeah, now I'm charging for what I'm worth, right? And explaining it and showing people and telling people like this is art. This is, this is a form of art and this is what I need to be charging for in order to get something like this onto a car. Call me crazy. Yeah, you can probably find someone cheaper down the street, but you know, it's not gonna, you're gonna get something like this right and I don't think I don't think as a designer like I'm I'm better than this right so this is what I tell them so going back we have the artwork it's beautiful now we got to fill it in so I just have Tyler's artwork up here in the corner just for reference so we are now working with a portrait styled artwork so portraits up and down whereas we got to put it onto a landscape piece of artwork right or piece of canvas, I should say. So again, just being clear, this is portrait, up and down, landscape is side to side, okay? So if I just take this piece, I'm gonna try to break it down. I'm gonna look at the piece and I'm gonna say, okay, what is the main focus of this artwork? Like, where is my eye being drawn to the most? Of course, it's gonna be this character in the middle, right? Which is Venom. So as I'm trying to visualize this, I'm trying to think of these webs kind of shooting all around the car. I'm trying to fill in this space. I'm trying to create some sort of flow with this. Like, what can we do with the webs here, right? This is just something I'm brainstorming at this point in time. I'm just having fun with the placements. I'm just going to see what works and what doesn't, right? So. Um, the webs are definitely going to have to come into play here, right? And then we have all these little minor, not minor characters, but they're smaller characters, right? Because your eye is being more drawn into the bigger venom. So when I'm looking at the vehicle, so this, this is a charger, right? I'm always trying to look for the biggest area on the car. Like what, what's going to give me most, um, um, what am I trying to say here? The most ample space to kind of show off the artwork that makes sense. So again, at this point, I'm just playing around. Where can this guy go? Where is he going to fit the best, right? I'm trying all these different areas, trying to see. Now, this car also has handles, right? But in this case, we're going to try to avoid the handles. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to try to place him in a good, good area. So I'm going to show you what I did. This was the first, very first thing I did. This is where I placed him. This is where I felt he fit best. Now, as you can see, I have carnage cut out here. Okay. There's a reason for that. <laughs> um, I'm like, okay, I like his placement. I like that the hand is kind of by the wheel well. Um, the things that are missing right now is Spider-Man. You know, we got, we got my character over here. We got, you know, I think that's Deadpool in the back and, you know, Maybe he, maybe Deadpool might not end up here. Maybe he, he might end up over here. I don't know yet. But for now, my main focus is this guy. Where are we going to place him? Right? So this is where I placed him. This is where I felt, you know, it was the biggest part on the car. 
usually it is towards the back of the car, right? That's going to have the most space. So, all right, we're good. And look, if I look at the door handles, you know, his head's not really cutting into it. It's just going to be some sort of coloring. It's going to be kind of solid. But right now, door handles here, yeah, you know, it's it's there's some stuff going on. But again, we're not going to worry about door handles just yet. So we're just looking at this. Okay, this is, a, this is a good placement. Now, the next step, this is what I did. Aha! You can see now how I'm sort of filling in this space, right? I'm using sort of the background textures here. I knew there was a lot of like webbing and things like that. Um, so it's like, okay, this is this is working. But now we got this guy on the back bumper and he's gonna be up here and yeah, so we gotta do another layer. So you can see how like tedious and time consuming something like this could actually be. Unless you were, you know, drawing it from scratch, but again we're using previous artwork that's already done. So this was the next step. Uh that's actually the front of the car, let's see. I should have labeled these as I was making them, but again I was just you know, having fun. So yeah, okay, so this was the next one. I really like this placement because now I took my guy from over here and I, and I got Spider-Man. So I basically took this half of the artwork and I applied it to the second half of the car. So now I'm filling in that gap, right? And the cool thing is because these guys are more along the bottom, yes, you got two hands here, but guess what? You're not really like, if you didn't really know the artwork as such, you're not really going to tell that's a hand. You're going to just think this is some sort of webbing or something that's going on, right? Um, but we can kind of work out that issue just as we kind of move forward a little bit more. But again, I got these two characters, right? So now they're they're kind of charging one another. It's just I'm creating my own piece now. I'm creating my own layout. So this is this is coming together nicely. Now the hard part is actually blending all of this stuff in. But I'm going to show you guys that. And then I said, okay. So we got this end of the car, what are we going to do? So again, I used some of more of this webbing from the artwork and I threw it onto this side, this section of the car. And what was really cool, you can see how this webbing, like it just happened, like the webbing, how it kind of transformed on the bumper. It was just like, oh, that's neat. I like how that kind of turned out. Um, so I'm filling in this space using some of the artwork, right? And then I think, what was the next layer? Something like this. Yeah. So. I'm like, okay, I'm missing this guy, this carnage guy. Where am I going to put him? And so I just kind of cut him out a little bit, and I just kind of threw him there. Um, he's pretty tiny anyway, right? So it's just like, he'll fit there. Like, you know, that would be a good area for him to kind of squeeze into. So we're getting all the characters there. Now, this looks a bit odd to me still. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of dive into that and get into it. But this is basically, like, the, ma the main layout of this is how the design started like honestly um, and I was like okay I like it like we got it pretty much all filled in um, if I turn off my template layer so you can see how many times I duplicated the image right um, but this is how it works so let's just go on to process number two okay so as I was mentioning before you know this sort of back area was still bothering me so um, I ended up getting rid of it just for the time being um, and now I just really want to make sure that however I'm filling in this design, it's going to fill in the entire vehicle as well as giving bleed. So bleed is just extra material that you're giving the installers. So I got to make sure that this artwork is covering every square inch of material, of bleed, everything. So you can kind of see, if I turn off the template, this is what I was working on. Uh, where did the layer go? So yeah, you can see how I took the webbing from over here and I threw it over here. Right? I'm elongating this hoard, like, because this is my canvas. I got to fill it all in. It's got to be completely covered. So initially, this is how it was, right? And it's like, okay, well, it can't just end there. It's got to, it's got to keep continuing on. So I'm just going to use my Photoshop skills. I'm just going to take this piece over here, copy it, flip it over, and voila. 
and I'm pretty sure that I used um, what they call the uh, the content aware tool to kind of create more of the webbing it's just going to replicate it it's just going to duplicate it um, again I have more tutorials where I kind of show that in a lot of the texturing uh, things that I do but again I'm just adding some more I'm trying to fill in that space um, so yeah that was this was version number two and let's just go on like version number three okay so you can see now before <laughs> after before after so I got really crazy with the webbing here um, I'm just gonna turn on this template so now you can see how this is like okay this was my idea we got the webbing over here and now we got all this extra webbing over here and now if I turn off my template, we're, we're slowly filling in all this extra space. It's all going to be webbing, right? Um, and the other thing that you can see, if I just turn this on and off, I removed the background from this guy. So that was a lot of work. So if I just zoom up here, I basically, you know, cut around him um, just to take away that background. The reason why I wanted to take the background is because if you look, these backgrounds from Carnage to this guy they don't match right I need to blend these two images together so that they're the one image so you can kinda see here yeah I, I don't even know at this point how many hours I had put in <laughs> um, I would say around this mark was around the six hour mark for sure for sure for sure for sure okay so then this was the next step so a bit there's a bit of drastic changes here. Um, so if I just go back and forth here. So you can see that I removed the background from Carnage here as well. So I had to go in and I had to cut around all these little shapes. And so like, yeah, if I just, it's really hard to do this sometimes. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom out. And you can see that this is sort of like a greenish sort of background and now I gotta try to bring this background onto the background of this guy. So I think I did pretty good um, when I look at them, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So um, it seemed pretty seamless to me. Um, but really, I just, again, it's just playing around and just using the different textures and that and just really just trying to blend it in together. Um, so having these two guys as their own separate elements and then just to work on the background itself worked so now the pieces are coming together um, you can also see like this webbing here where there was no like this web didn't connect at all so I had to use again the content aware tool and I just used some of those webbing um, to kind of zoom up here kind of see and now it's like now the piece is coming together it's becoming one right so, so yeah and then I use like all these different textures like grungy textures things like that um, and there's Kirkham's signature. <laughs> now the other thing, the next step, I was looking at this hand. Um, so if I turn on my template here, turn on, on, computer slow because these files are massive. Come on. All right, there we go. So uh, now I can tell like this is a hand, right? And I can tell it's probably from this guy's hand. So now I wanted to make it look less obvious. I didn't want this to be seen as another hand. So as you can see, if I just switch back and forth, turn off this template here, you can see just if you're looking at this area, do, 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 do. I squished it in, right? So now it doesn't even look like a hand. It just looks like some sort of really cool something or another. Um, the viewer is not really going to know because once you turn on this template, You know, it just looks like something really cool, you know, like, I don't know. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Ah. Um, so let me just go on to the next one. So basically, as I was doing this, I was saving each version so that I can talk about it later and show um, the whole entire process on how this was actually created. Um, so let me just open up the next one. All right. So if I show you the differences, so if you look around this area, if I just switch back and forth, you can see the differences. So before, after, before, after. So you can see that I'm actually adding some more things in here to the hand. 
Um, if I turn on my template, boop, boop, template, come on. Ah, oh, so slow. Um, it just, the hand still looked like a hand to me, I guess, at this point, somewhat. So if you look at this, now it looks a little less like a hand. There's more webbing in that going on. And then I actually took a little bit more webs and just threw it towards the car because this whole area needed to be filled. Um, so you can see I'm adding some more background um, to fill in that space of Spider-Man. So again, it's looking pretty messy, right? <laughs> but we're going to clean all this up later at the final stages. Um, again, just working on the little details. I added some more webbing down here onto the front bumper. Um, again, just taking pieces. So now that we've created more larger pieces, I took this section, copied it, and just threw it on the bottom here. So just blending it all in, just blending, blending, blending. Okay, so on to the final stages. So from here, let's just go back and forth like we've been doing. So back, so this is the final, well, not like the final final, but yeah, it's pretty much the final uh, layout and everything. Um, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, okay, so this was our last version, and then this. So as I kind of shuffle between the two, I can see some changes on what I did and what I made. So I'll kind of direct your eye to this section over here. Um, you can see, you know, I got rid of the characters on top and just added some more webbing. Um, kind of, so like if I turn on the template, 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 I don't know, what's the proper term? <laughs> if anyone knows, comment below. <laughs> template template. Um, yeah, so this cant rail here, I just, like if you look at this one, so the cant rail here, you can see that the graphics are kind of going up on top onto the roof, and then here is just blended a little bit more, just with sort of what we got, what we got going on with the bumper and the front bumper and things like that. Um, Alright, so let's just turn that off again, and I can see already the other change that I made. So I got two of these characters, he's being quadrupled pretty much. Um, so I just had to go in and clean that up a bit. Um, so again, just just taking more of the, the background here where it's just there's a lot of dust and smog and just extending that just a little bit more just to fill in that space, make it nice and clean and crisp and clear. Um, so here, yeah, you can kind of see how it's just, you got that psychedelic, you know, version going on. There's multiple of him. So, so yeah, that's that for that. And then what else did I do? Let me just switch back and forth again really quick. Uh, wait, it's the same size. So yeah, I just added some more black, some more webbing, things like that to the front here. Just to blend that stuff in because, again, got the characters and just, if you're ever in doubt, just use black or some sort of texture or something like that, right? So that's it. And, and last finishing touch, um, Tyler sent me like a, like a photo of an award or something that he won and it had a signature um, and his name on it on the, uh, on the award. So I just wanted to throw that sort of on the wrap somewhere just to say like, you know, art by Taylor Cookham. Um, so if I turn back the template on and we can just see the wrap in all its glory and this was something I felt confident to show the client. Um, this is, you know, the direction. Uh, kept pretty much all the colors the same as the original artwork. Um, you know, we'll definitely have to print this to see how it would actually look on the printers. But overall, you know, this is a good sort of solid thing to show a design to the client. Um, but lo and behold, I was really hoping I was really hoping that, you know, we get approval from this, but there was some more, I guess, some more unforeseen things that started happening Ooh. with this. Um, but before I dive into that, there was one other thing. I mentioned the door handles. Uh, again, I just wanted to keep the door handles as less going on as possible. Um, so this is pretty solid. This door handle here, I think it works. Um, because the door handles too are pretty flat, they don't really like extend out uh, where you can kind of put your hand in behind it and pull. It's more like of an under door thing. So I think the installers would 
do it well. Um, but just in case, I just printed off, uh, you know, an extra door handle here and there in case they needed to match anything within this sort of graphic because there is a lot going on, right? Um, so yeah, this was the first initial design that I sent over to the client of the driver's side. And then we had to go through another process. So Tyler loved his art, couldn't believe how I did this, how I actually made it work. But then we had to get approval from the actual car owner, and that was Lucy. And I said before, she's super, super sweet. So I think with her, you know, she, there were some things that she wanted to see in this, right? So this was sort of other things, other players into the game. So as a designer, the first rule, I guess, first rule of thumb of advice, find out how many people are actually in charge like who is in charge of of um, the final design right like who's gonna give you final approval um, in this case I didn't realize that we needed approval from Lucy <laughs> um, because sometimes when you when you're quoting and you're thinking of things um, you want all these sort of variables in your price quote right because this is gonna be all extra time because um, now if Lucy Lucy could come in and say she hates this thing and just wants it completely changed right of course she's not gonna do that but you know I had to kind of compensate for for her revisions and things like that so it added some more time onto my plate when we already had sort of like a budget in mind but you know I was still able to make it work with the revisions that she had now when she came back with the revision, she said that the interior of her car, and there's things in the car right now, the theme that she was going with was black and red. So this was something that, you know, just it just threw us sort of for a loop. We weren't expecting that. Um, she was saying that the wrap is too colorful. She loves the art, no, but she really wanted this wrap to um, complement what was all the other stuff that she got going in, in her car because she spent, you know, so much money uh, really building this car to be her personal, you know, this is her baby, right? So she asked me if it would be possible just to make this design red and black. Like, is that possible? And I'm like, yeah, you know, colors, we can change it. Um, I don't quite know how it's going to look, um, but I'll go in and I'll just see what I can do. What I was thinking, if we had this majority of this black and red and then we had just some of the characters especially carnage because he is red right and we got spider-man and things like that if we make certain elements and characters red within the design it could work so I just said you got to give me some more time um, for me to actually dive in and do this so I'm gonna show you the process on how we transform this from the color to the black and red version okay so shooting over here and this is the final version so you can see color black red and white and grace of course right um, the other thing that Lucy kinda mentioned so even though I did all this awesome web work with everything she didn't want the web because the other thing that Lucy had in mind is that this car was mostly gonna be about Venom it wasn't really she didn't really want it to portray Spider-Man as such um, so you know I kinda told her look like if the webbing is really and I agree with her 100%. Um, if the webbing, you know, is too much for me to go now and create this symbiote stuff that Venom has all around the car, this is going to be extra time. So we got to talk, you know, with, with the bigger guys um, if we can kind of get permission to go ahead and do this because, you know, again, this is time. This is all I'm creating these elements from the ground up. So the idea I kind of pitched was maybe I can take... Um, I believe I, I did something way back in the day where I used uh, like photos of uh, water liquid stuff. Um, it was just cool. Let me just turn off the, uh, the template here so you guys can see a bit more. Um, so you can kind of see that it is more of a liquidy. Now, I don't know if you look at Symbiote, it, it's kind of it's more like of an oil. It's not really as a liquid as such, but you know, this still could kind of pass off as sort of the symbiote. People are going to know what it is. Um, and then I can kind of create that the liquid more in a web-like sort of pattern. And then that way we can call it symbiote. There you go. That's simple. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Real simple. Um, but she was really happy with that. Um, just kind of replacing the webbing and things like that. And we could add a lot more black. And then what really gives this wrap that 
sort of sex appeal, I guess, is the reds, right? The reds are popping through. So now everything's kind of blended. This doesn't even look like a hand anymore. It just it looks like some sort of cool element that's just part of the design, all right? And, um, you know, just little subtle pieces of red. Got the eye, the tongue. Uh, Carnage is definitely going to be red. The gums here, like, I loved it. Um, really like the contrast here and um, you know added the our logos now I got it I got a new logo new brand um, this is old school now this is old curvaceous wraps but uh, still very very proud of it and um, not only that but once this is printed like I was saying in the beginning of the video um, Vinyl Vixen and Wrap Sash had this really cool idea to do it on carbon fiber so all of this black everything all this is going to be on carbon fiber like all of it um, which is such a cool, cool effect. Um, so let me just let me just see. I'm gonna just look at my layers here, see how how it actually looks. So yeah, you can kind of see um, black and red option. So yeah, it's just like ooh, look at that. Ah, so cool. Let me see the layers that I got here. So this was just like a selective color, I think. What's this? I think I'm just sort of saturating the reds a little bit just so that they're more deeper and more richer. Um, there's just so many layers on this. And then I'm just kind of playing around with the uh, the contrast, things like that. So a lot of adjustment layers here, just playing around with what looks good. Because like this one, you know, just again, contrast, right? So adding a bit more blacks. Um, you know, this one was a bit more whites, so I just wanted to darken that a bit. Yeah, so playing again with lighting hue saturations, so it's more of a yellowish red. But I really wanted it like a deep, deep, like bright red. So that's what we went with, and um, that's how we kind of did the the, uh, the driver's side. So now for the passenger, if I do the passenger right now, and then I talk about the hood and the roof, it's going to make this video super, super long. So what I plan to do... Um, at a later point is maybe if this is something you guys would be interested in is I could even do a even more in-depth sort of layout on how I'm actually uh, you'll actually see me cut out around the artwork so you'll see me actually do the thing right and then kind of come to this final result because there's a lot of people they're saying they really love watching the overviews and and the time lapses and the things that I'm doing but at the same time they really want to get into the nitty-gritty and actually watch me do this thing so if that's something that interests you guys please let me know in the comments below um, if something more uh, advanced would be more intriguing to you um, I can definitely arrange something like that um, but just to keep this video short because I mean I'm probably at like the hour mark right now um, I think that's more than enough but for those of you that are interested I'm just gonna show you the passenger side really quick just I'll do I'll show you guys my layers because I know you guys want to see the layers I think that's pretty cool sometimes uh, one sec so here we go here's the passenger side definitely different um, I had to again create a lot of my own elements here just to fill in some of the spacing um, you can see, you know, this was material by 3M. We have Muto and then Fellers. Fellers is a pretty cool company. Um, they're just sort of like, uh, they, they distribute all the vinyl. So if you want it, I don't know, black vinyl or whatever, Fellers has like a lot of it. Um, so they're super cool. Um, definitely one of my favorites in the rep supply company business. Um, but yeah. Um, what else can I tell you guys about this? Let me just... Let's just turn off the template. Template. Um, so you can kind of see how it looks. Uh, yeah. So this guy, I don't know if you can kind of see, he's got his teeth back here. Let me just see if I can find this layer. Oh my gosh, this is so long ago since I created this. Uh, red and black option. Yeah, so this was like Tyler's original artwork. And then, again, me doing the black and red option. Uh, let me see. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Okay. Sorry. I named these pretty well, I think. <laughs> I think. Uh, Venom body. Aha. So this was like old school artwork that I did back in the day when I first started. <laughs> I look at him now and I'm like, you know, I'm not really like in love with him. There's stuff that I would definitely change. But in this case, because the client needed something, um, 
So if I just move him, you can kind of see his shoulder here was missing. So I was like, you know what, if I need a shoulder, instead of me re illustrating everything, I already have a Venom that I created like a few years ago. I can kind of just use his shoulder blade and put him right there. And then what I can do, I can just kind of blend him in into this character, right? So that's me just, again, trying to problem solve and just fill in some spaces here for the actual vehicle canvas that, that we're working on. So, so there's that. And for the hell of it, why not? We're doing it. Um, I'll show you the, the top. And I can kind of discuss really quickly what I did there. Woohoo. Oh my gosh, even looking at this now, I'm kind of like, wow, this is so cool. I can't believe I actually did this. Uh, <laughs> um, so for here, this was another art piece by Tyler. Um, he sent it over to me. Um, you know, just we needed something cool for the hood. Usually when I'm doing hood designs, I like doing a character that's face on. Um, just gives it something a little bit more. Um, whereas characters that are more side profile fit better for the sides of the car. So that's something you can always keep in mind too. Because um, again, you're working with the portrait to landscape. Uh, when you're working on a hood, it's more, it's kind of, it's kind of in between the cross space of a landscape to a portrait, right? Um, so here, uh, he had some, in the artwork, he had some webbing that, you know, kind of applied. And then we had no idea what we were going to do for the roof, but I found this graphic online. It was just a vector um, of a spider, uh, of venom. And I just thought, well, what if I just added some grungy effects to it? Um, I have another video where I kind of show you how to make grunge. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're older videos, so it's kind of cool to watch myself uh, talk about this. And I'm just like, Christina, why aren't you building more content? Like people want to know this stuff so I'm definitely working on it guys I'm working on it but uh, this was really cool I just added some grungy overlays and just kind of like the way that I made the grunge was kind of stripping across like it like the car was moving really fast it's like it's like blowing it's like chalk or something so I thought that was cool and then for the trunk I don't know I um the movie just came out pretty much and I know the saying was we are venom um so I, I tried to find some already created font, uh, nothing I could really find online. Um, there was a lot of artwork there. So what I ended up doing was taking a small Google image. I blew it up just like how I showed you guys in the in this video, and then I retraced it. So that's what I did. And then I added some red speckles, stuff from Tyler's artwork, and just threw it on the back. So it all kind of blends. It's all one piece, you know what I mean? And uh, and then there you go. And then I set it up for paneling, which that's another video all on its own. You guys are dying for paneling, I know. Um, it's coming, it's coming. Just hang tight. Paneling is coming. Um, but for now, this is how you can actually take someone else's artwork and apply it to a car and just make it work. And the things that you need to think about and how to break it apart and what you can add and what you can, you know, it's a lot of playing around with different things, finding out what works, what doesn't. And it's all time. So when people ask me how long a design can take me, it really varies. That is such a loaded question. Um, and as you can see, like all together on this, I needed to keep within 25 hours uh, of the complete design. Now, if I was to like do the artwork myself, um, yeah, you're definitely looking at way more than 25 hours, right? So that's the beauty of it. So even though it might not be your exact artwork, if you're working with another artist, you can see there's still a vast amount of work as a designer that we need to do on our end in order to get this done. So hopefully, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys learned a little something, and um, I'll just stop it here, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye, guys. And there you have it. We have another YouTube video up and loaded. So thank you guys for getting this far. If you have come this far, if you watched the whole entire video, um, Thank you, as I always say, thank you so, so, so much. Um, you know, doing this kind of thing, it's just, it's hard, like, to keep up with YouTube. I'm sure we can all relate. With me being a one-woman business, I'm trying to keep on top of everything. Uh, not only just juggling with my clients, but juggling with how I can keep on social media and doing these YouTube videos because it is, it is a lot, a lot of work. And really, when I first started, 
I just wanted to be an artist. That's all I thought. You know, if I'm good at art, that's all I need to know. I don't need to know anything else. But then, yeah, how wrong was I? When you get involved in dealing with clients and then you got to deal with invoices and then you got to respond and then now there's social media and then there's all these other things to keep your business growing. It's insane. So anyway, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that I'm going to try to keep consistent with this. I have a lot of people saying, yay, Christina, you're back on, but how long, like how long can we see your videos for before you're, you're off the map again? So I'm going to make a promise to you guys that I will not fall off the map. If you guys have any questions, please hit me up. I will respond because I always say, if you're going to make the time to respond to me, I'm going to make the time to respond to you. So, and again, another big goal of mine is teaching people. So if I can make you a better artist, a better designer, uh, or if you even want to get involved in the vehicle wrap world, these videos are going to help. And I know like I have so much work that I have yet to share with the world and keeping that, honing that stuff in, like it's not, I'm not doing the world any good. I'm not doing any, any type of service. So for me teaching this stuff, this is something that brings me enjoyment and fulfillment within my life. Um, so I'm going to keep this up, okay? I promise, I promise, I promise. And um, yeah, we'll just leave it here. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the process. I mean, it's definitely a different one. It's probably one that you never even thought of before. But uh, let me know your thoughts down below and I will respond and talk to you guys later. All right, take care. Have an amazing week and we will see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.